So don't look at one-offs. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We can all let our friends down from time to times, or we could be let down by the humans in our life. But values show up in consistent behavior patterns. So what we're looking for here is over time, is this person adding happiness to your life or is this person taking away happiness from your life? What's up everybody and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Yeah, so there is no very official definition for a toxic person or a toxic relationship. So the one that I propose or the one that I use as a guideline is, is that person taking away happiness and purpose from your life? And that usually makes them fairly easy to identify. The, the you either, either take a, a hit on your happiness or on, on your purpose. And most of what you'll, the, the role you'll most likely see those toxic people in is that uh, they usually speak up the moment you propose a change. You want to cha make a change in your life. You want to get a promotion. You want to work on your health. You want to get a business started, what, whatever that change might be. And, and that's when those toxic relationships usually show that that red light and they, and they step in. And they, they step in usually for, for two reasons. <laughs> the first one is sort of subconsciously um, egoistic. The moment I change, you, AJ, might feel a little bad because you should too, right? The moment I say, hey, AJ, I'm going to the gym. I signed up for this like ultimate, ultimate membership, whatever. And the other person now might think, okay, this puts a little bit of pressure on me. Um, and and the other the other way that toxic people show up is that they um, they are worried that you leave their life. Like if I start going to the gym every day from here on out, and then I'm going to eat salad for the rest of the week, um, maybe our nights in the pub are a thing of the past, and that's when you know. They, they, again, usually unconsciously um, throw a wrench into the gears to try and stop us developing. It's certainly an important point to make that it's not necessarily coming from a place of malice. Most of these toxic relationships are not going to be sociopaths. They're not going to be people who are actively out to harm you. But it's subconsciously, they're either feeling judged based on your change and a change in your relationship, or they're feeling afraid that you are going to leave them behind as you're evolving. And I know we've talked about this a few times on the podcast, but I love to think of our lives as seasons. And there are gonna be people in your life that are in the right place for the right season. And as you change and grow, they may no longer be a great fit for your life. And two caveats that we always talk about when it comes to toxicity, number one is that it's on a spectrum. So there are small and subtle ways that someone can be toxic for you, holding you back from the change you're looking for or holding you from reaching your purpose, or they could be really actively pursuing damage to your physical or mental well-being. So as we go through today's episode and we start identifying some of these signs, really take a look at not only the people in your life, which is easy to do, but also take a closer look at your own behaviors and the way you're showing up in relationships. Because some of us may not realize that we're showing up in toxic ways with other people. So this is not necessarily a judgment on just those in our life. This is a great opportunity for you to self-assess and take a look at how you're showing up in the relationships that matter in your life. The last caveat we love to make is that toxicity is context dependent. What does that mean? Well, it means that just because you're toxic for me doesn't mean you'll be toxic for Johnny or doesn't mean you'll be toxic for Michael. So when we label a toxic relationship, we're not saying that person is terrible and no one should be friends with them. We're just saying that we want to limit our exposure, our time, our effort and energy in that relationship as it is damaging our mental health. It's crossing boundaries and it's not allowing us to grow in meaningful ways. Well, I want to add to this as well that 
it certainly doesn't have to be somebody who's malicious or has malice towards you to be toxic, as, as you were mentioning, but they're subscribed to a worldview that's incompatible with your worldview. Therefore, they have values that are important to them that go against your values or at least rub against them in the wrong way. And so if you don't share a worldview and you're not striving for the same values, well, it's difficult to grow together. It's difficult to see the world in the same manner. And this is why values and creating uh, some things like company culture around values is so important because these are the things you lean on. And when you have strong values, you don't even need rules. Uh, we understand what's important to each other. And then I can observe those same values for myself as well as those same values for AJ and Michael. And if those values are different, it's going to be difficult for us to get along or see things in the same way. And the way values show up is consistent behavior patterns. So don't look at one-offs. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We can all let our friends down from time to time, or we could be let down by the humans in our life. But values show up in consistent behavior patterns. So what we're looking for here is over time, is this person adding happiness to your life or is this person taking away happiness from your life? Can they not be happy for you? Or are they accepting of your values all the time, sometimes or never? And if it's really never, if you're constantly butting heads over your values or when you're announcing your goals or sharing what your aspirations are with people, and they are constantly judging you or criticizing you. These are the signals that we're looking for when it comes to toxicity. But I know I've had bad days. I know I've let my friends down it, from time to time. It happens. So we're not here to write anyone off just based off of one action or behavior. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. I want to give an example of this that we've all contend with. So in this company, we have myself, Michael, and AJ here doing a Zoom. And we all value time and we all value being punctual that's important to us aj and i are both from the midwest so that's sort of ingrained in us from living in and i'm uh, german so here we go <laughs> yeah thanks for ruining my joke michael i was going to get there but um so these things are incredibly important and so this allows us to get along very well however if we have a teammate who is not interested in punctuality show or or sees time as important as we do we're going to have a direct conflict that is going to throw us off from the work that we have to do it's going to throw us off from being our best now i certainly know from being on stage or coming in to do a podcast, I always like to be at my best. I wanna be refreshed, I wanna be ready for it. I'm gonna fire myself up for it. Uh, everyone does what they need to do in order to be at their best to perform at a level that they feel comfortable with and they can be pleased with. But if you throw that wrench into the machine, that wax, that knocks everybody off. And, and now everyone's trying to figure out how do we get through this how do we find a way to, and with different values, to be at our best? And this is quite difficult. And I also want, and I'm actually curious about your your opinion on on this, AJ and Johnny. Um, my my view on this is that I personally don't care about all the values of all the people in my life. Like there are certain values I'm not willing to compromise on, but others I'm not going to fight about. For example, for me as a personal value, it's very important to live a vegan lifestyle. And my friends like make fun of me about that all the freaking time. But it's not something I'll, I'll fight about, right? That's just, just it, it's, not, it's not worth my time and effort. And I don't frankly care. But the moment it's about my, my purpose, my work as a coach, like there my values become very important. So, so there are some I really care and I fight for and others I I kind of I can't ignore if I have to. What are, what are your thoughts on that? 
I completely agree when it comes to hobbies and passions. I don't need you to love golf. I don't need you to be an F1 fan for us to get along. But when it comes to punctuality, when it comes to being loyal, when it comes to supporting me when I'm happy or sad, that's far more important to me. And it's funny that we're sort of now sharing personal anecdotes because I think we've all been in that situation where we have created expectations in others around these values. We've looked for them to reciprocate in ways that we show up in relationships. And then when we haven't found it, we've felt let down, we've felt hurt. But the key here is that's a one-off behavior. That's a one-off feeling. Now, if this is happening time and time again, as we get to these seven signs of toxic people, then you want to start to question, you know, is this relationship really healthy for me? Is this relationship empowering me and allowing me to feel like the best version of myself? Or is this relationship disempowering me, taking away from my mental health and happiness? So let's talk a little bit about how we decide if someone's toxic. There's really two questions that we want you to keep in mind before we start with these seven signs. The first question is, quite frankly, as Michael said earlier, is this person adding happiness to my life? Now, hopefully, this is a fairly easy question for you to answer as you go through your social circle, as you think about the people that you're spending time and investing your efforts in and those relationships. And this includes friends that might be local that you can actually hang out with on the weekends and, and watch F1, or this could be your workout buddy or the people that you're interacting with in your clubs, in your meetups, even virtually. So there are going to be moments where people, as I said earlier, will let us down, might cause us to feel unhappy or to not enjoy our happiness. But is this a repeated action time and time again? Is this someone who is taking away from your moment in the sun or your ability to enjoy life? And if it's that is the case, then you have to start to ask, okay, well, have I done a good job communicating? Have I been clear in my communication and my expectations or boundaries with this person? And sometimes we haven't done that. So it's hard for the other person to balance how they should show up for us. So in that, right? We have a gut feeling around happiness. You should know when you're happy. You should start to feel when you're unhappy. And is this person that you're in a relationship with, are they showing up and allowing you to fully express that happiness? I know as we've talked to some of our clients, they're at times embarrassed or they don't feel comfortable sharing what they're super excited about, whether it be comic books or video games or F1 racing. And just because they don't feel comfortable sharing, they're not creating space for those relationships in their life to blossom. So are you hiding your happiness from people in your life? Are you hiding those moments when you really feel alive and you're excited and enthusiastic? Uh, if so, that could also be a sign that this person isn't the best fit for you and isn't the best fit for a relationship. The issue there is vulnerability. And for a lot of people, they have been demoralized when it comes to sharing their vulnerability, sharing their excitement. And because of that, they don't even know when they're excited. And that it's, it's that self-awareness that allows you to understand, I am excited, I am happy, and then to, wanna, to want to share that. It seems that I run into weekly somebody asking the question about what to do with toxic people in their life. One of the reasons why we're doing this podcast today. And for me, when you ask that question, it's almost a no brainer. You've, you've already decided that this person is not worth having in your life. This person is making you unhappy, but yet you are trying to figure out a way how to keep them in your life. So you're living life in a reactive way manner which to be vulnerable to be excited to go after your dreams in order to make all of those things happen you have to live proactively you can't live re reactively and then hope that things pan out in a, in a good way that the dice fall your way uh, you have to make those things happen and being self-aware is the first 
key step in that. 